Welcome back, everybody, to HVAC R&D with Ryden and Dennis. I'm Dennis, and tonight we are going to get into the part two of the training discussion. We were kind of covering some uh, what we thought about HVAC training and where it's going and where it should go. Um, we got Zach on the show tonight. Zach came from the contractor side uh, with a pretty large company. He is now working with us on the distribution side, so... We'll kind of talk to Zach, bounce some stuff off him, um, kind of see what we'd like to see on training in HVAC and where it's going. And, uh, of course, we'll get into a few more things with Zach that has nothing to do with HVAC, probably. Just guessing. But uh, let's get this thing started. All right, welcome everybody back to HVAC R&D. Um, got Ryan and Dennis here tonight. We are going to do a part two on, we're going to follow up on the training podcast that we did uh, where we kind of went through some training uh, coming from the distributor side. Um, but tonight we've got, somebody just cracked a beer. I don't know who that was. <laughs> um, tonight we got, we're going to have a guest on the show. As we talked about before, we're going to have Zach on the show. Um, he's kind of been on the, you know, he was in the, he was on the contractor side. We're going to see what he thinks about training. Um, he's now on the distributor side. So we're going to kind of uh, introduce Zach. Um, of course, Ryden's here tonight. Hopefully Ryden's on the other end somewhere. Cheers, everybody. Yep. That must've been Ryden cracking the beard. We got Zach. Zach, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm saying it like you're like you're on the moon. Zach, are you there? Zach, are you? So yep. we got Zach here tonight. So uh, you, you may have heard us talk about Zach a little bit, right? So he's in the branch with us. Um, we do prank Zach a lot, and we may get into that tonight. Maybe he can tell us a little bit about what he thinks about that. <laughs> um, it's but, all uh, good. No, it's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'll <clears> – <throat> so – like I said, on the first show, we talked about training, um, coming from the distributor side and I kind of went through some stuff. Um, so little, let's get a little background on you, Zach, kind of how you come into the industry. Um, that'd be what you did before, why you kind of went in the industry and kind of how you got where you're at now. Okay. Well, no pressure. <laughs> <clears throat> I worked in restaurants and sales jobs. And I actually worked at a sporting goods store and I remember walking into the break room and looking at the newspaper and there was an ad for <clears throat> a huge contractor in Charlotte, which everyone's familiar with, but it was advertising for HVAC technicians needed. And I didn't know anybody in my family or friends that was in the HVAC industry. And I thought, man, that'd be really cool to to do something that nobody else does that I know. And so I ended up signing up and, and went to, um, you know, community college and went and, and took an HVAC. Yeah. I did it for, uh, two semesters. I got my license or, uh, not license, but my degree. Right. And that's how I got started. And then I got hired on with a company as a helper and then moved up to working in the office as an estimator and project manager. And then now I am on the distributing side. So I didn't realize you had went to, to community college for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where, where did you, I guess I can't really say where did you go? We all know it's in Charlotte somewhere. Um, it's no, it's north of Charlotte, about an hour. It's in Statesville. But yeah, so I went to that and um, the first semester I tried to get in, uh, it was booked up and I couldn't get in. I was like, oh my God, what, what am I going to do? And the lady said, yeah, well, they fill up really quick. So I had to wait a whole semester. 
And then I finally signed up for it. And the first class I took, this is how green I was because my family came from banking and medical fields. So that's, that's where we were. And the first class I took was introduction to electricity. And I, the first question I asked in the entire class of this industry is the guy was talking about, you know, resistance and ohms and voltage and amp draws and all this stuff. And I raised my hand. I was in the front row because I wanted to make sure that I <laughs> knew exactly what I was learning because I was like, I'm doing this for my living. I'm, I'm going to learn this crap. And I looked at him. I said, what's an ohm? And I remember he looked at me like this is a lost cause. He probably didn't know how to explain <laughs> that. <laughs> no, because he probably never had that question. Uh, next question. Oh. <laughs> uh, What's but yeah, an I sat in the front. That's front a loaded seat. question right there. Yeah, what's an ohm? I didn't know. <laughs> That's great. And he's going to pull you to the side and have to explain that until you about, take about but four But you know, the cool thing is class. I still, out of all my family, I'm still the only one in a, in a trade, which is, it's cool. It's cool until everybody wants you to, well, you know. To fix everything. Yeah, until they want you to like, they call you, hey, I got to, I haven't talked to this friend in like, nine months hey how you doing yeah uh so what do you need yeah so what i got this issue with my furnace i'm like yeah well i got a guy you can call here's his number i'll text it to you <laughs> yeah. done <laughs> yep. so yeah, i anyway, actually so uh the training i have i'm having this week so you know we got i had a factory guy come down and kind of oversee it right so me and him got to talking about um there's only, I think there's only two, maybe two or three high schools in the United States that, that have, um, HVAC as a class Like we had, I mean, I took auto mechanics, right. In high school, mm -hmm. um, you could take, of course the old shop class, right. With the, the teacher missing fingers. Um, but they don't have that anymore. I mean, they don't No, they don't now, but now remember last year I went and did that that full day um, at the high yeah, school, was not far from us because they were building like a whole trades little trade center for them. So that, that high school already has now they've brought back an apprenticeship with a sprinkler company like a, right. And then they're supposed to be building a full HVAC lab, trying to bring some trades back into, um, at least one high school in the county next to us. So I'm hoping, you know, we might start seeing a bit of a resurgence of it. Yeah, I mean, it's just look, you just look down. I mean, the kids that don't want to go to a four-year college and don't have this plan figured out, they're just looked down on. I know it's bad in the town I'm in now. Like, yeah, you know. I guess Corey, it depends Corey's on going in the 10th grade. And, yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it does. I mean. You know, if you're in an industrial town or something like that. It, or if you're out in the country, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. I feel like some of them schools are starting to bring bring that back. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, Corey, last year, ninth grade, we had to go and meet with the lady. And the first thing she says is, you know, are you doing four years college or two years? And he said, um, <laughs> two. None, bitch. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, um, are we allowed to cuss on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No okay. take back. Okay. Well, you okay. just did. Uh, yeah, well, I, you can edit this out. But <laughs> sorry, <laughs> just, that would have been that would have been the greatest thing ever if he really had that response. <laughs> yeah, he he said two. Like soon, she couldn't even get the rest out of her mouth. You're gonna be doing a four year, two year, two. Two's good. I'm good with three. <laughs> I'm like, uh, what? And I mean, it's they were. Uh, they were strong arming us pretty bad. Like they, he needed to know his plan right then. I'm like, he's in ninth grade, and that's half the problem. He right? plays drums, and that's literally all he thinks about. Corporate literally, America. yeah. I said he's gonna play drums for a living. She's like, looked at me like, <laughs> really? I'm like, you mean you're gonna you're gonna strip that dream from him right here? Like, we're not doing that. Yeah. Now when he's when he's like. 25 and he's still living in my house it's time to go the drums ain't working bud you gotta well 26 is when you legally can't have them on your insurance anymore so maybe you should bump it back a year <laughs> that's a good point Zach. Perfect. 26 no 
when he's I know 20, because I was one of those. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was I was too. My mom was a school teacher. So it was, was a huge sit down talk like Zach. <clears throat> Here's a reality check right here, buddy. And I just remember thinking, "Oh my god, what am I going to do?" <laughs> that was when I was working at that sporting goods store. I was uh, Yep. Yeah, I was on I was on my parents' insurance until I stopped selling insurance and went to distribution. <laughs> What'd you sell, Affleck? No. Worse. <laughs> mm. <laughs> What'd you sell? I forgot about oh, riding selling yeah, insurance. I, I was, a, what, was it casket insurance? No, not that bad. <laughs> Whole life, not basket. No. Uh, no, I sold... <laughs> I was, I'm trying to remember. I know Dennis and I started to go down that rat hole before because I said, "Sorry, honestly, I'm sorry." No, 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 here. no, because because honestly, you know, one of the things we we're going to talk about is kind of like training experiences a little bit because I wanted to hear kind of some of the things that you went through training wise. Um, oh with, well, even like your past yeah. work experiences with with everything. There's yeah. some. I've got some. There's some intense some training story. that you learn from it, but. The, the best one-on-one, like person-to-person sales experience I ever, you know, as a learning experience was selling insurance. Like if, if you can sell insurance, you can about figure out how to sell anything. Is so it life insurance or oh, is yeah. it like... It was like, life insurance. Yeah, okay. Mm. Which is... That's a hard one too because that's like talking about death and stuff. Yeah, that's a tough sell. Yeah. And yeah. I, know, <laughs> I know Dennis and I were talking about how do you can get sell a UV light. That? I probably can't sell some Where life Where are you going to be in 10 years when you're dead? Yep. <laughs> I don't care. Like, Where's your child? How much is be? it a month? <laughs> I don't have a child. Where's your future children going to be? Exactly. <laughs> so Zach, tell me on on the contractor side if you can remember <clears throat> what kind of training did you did y'all have? Did they send y'all to training? I mean, did you sign up for it? What do you remember? <clears throat> Yeah, we had, uh, well, I mean, there was this, we had a couple, we call them semesters because it was either spring or the fall when everything was slow, but right. I remember I was stoked about going to training because, you know, I went through college and I, I learned it. I sat in the front row and I loved it. I loved every bit of it because I knew that's what I was going to do. And because I knew that's what I was going to do, I wanted to be like the best at it. And so I like ate it up. I loved it. And I asked a billion questions and I probably got on my teacher's nerves, but right. so this training class came and it's like, all right, you know, we're going to, we're going to send you and you're going to be the one person that is certified to work on uh, variable speed air handlers. And I'm like, okay, that's awesome. You know, like that. I felt like value in myself and everything else. Right. So we go to this class and, uh, I was stoked and I walked in and it was this huge, you know, classroom was real nice. They had units set up all in the back and I'm like, this is awesome. We're going to like get to do something with this and you know, they're going to let us, you know, take it apart or whatnot. And the whole thing was eight hours with a a break in the, in between the four hours, eight hours of looking at a PowerPoint presentation with a guy talking (laughs) in monotone. (laughs) And I'm telling you, I was, stoked up until i remember you telling me 10 minutes minutes into it i'm just like man and then i remembered why i struggled in high school so bad because i i need to stand up i need to do something yeah you need that i mean like i just wanted to like either the one run around make a little hot lap asking questions is fine or making even if you like were to to stand up and like make it interactive even if it's a powerpoint but you make it interactive where everyone's participating and they're like you have them in teams and they're like working together to come up with the answer. It's something to keep you, but no sitting there just looking. I mean, I felt like I was copying an overhead projector and oh, it was, I, I really don't remember overhead remember, projector. I don't think, I'm, yeah, I, think I, mean, I still ask you questions about uh variable speed because I didn't learn anything in that. <laughs> well, so I, so when I started like my first few classes, right. Um, like we had a we had a pretty good turnout because nobody even knew who I was, nobody had ever seen me, <clears throat> and I remember, I remember looking around. The, I don't even know what I was saying. Right, I'm looking at these powerpoints and I'm reading stuff, and all I'm doing is trying to see if anybody's sleeping. Like I'm looking at everybody's face, <laughs> trying to see if I'm putting anybody to sleep because I was so worried about that. I'm like, God, I, am I just rambling up here? Like. 
Um, but that that's what that's the thing. Like I I just feel like we got to get away from that somehow. Well, there's we a reason why people that. get into this industry. It's because they don't want to go sit in a classroom for four years. You know, I mean, they want to. Yeah, yes, they don't stick they them want, in a they, classroom. They want to use their hands. Their hand. They're blue collar, not white collar, and they want to. They want to touch it. They want to. They want to make the mistake and learn from the mistake. They don't want to be told about it. Well, they want. Right. That, they want that sense of accomplishment too. I mean, that was. That was probably the one thing that I appreciated the you know the most of it when I was still still in the field is you know you did something that day you got done you went home you felt like you accomplished something and you got to feel good yeah it felt it, good you know it felt really good oh yeah when I the you know the first couple systems that you walk up on and you fix them of course that gets you know that gets that gets old <clears> after <throat> like eight years <laughs> but I mean I still. If you got one that stumps you right and you figure it out, like that's me. Like oh, I, you're the man. It makes me feel good. Oh you yeah, you feel like the man. Oh yeah. Until you get that um, call back. <laughs> until you get the call back. Yeah. Until you and forgot then you to try really hard to get someone else on your on your team to go do it for you, so you don't have to look <laughs> at that homeowner in the face and know that you failed. <laughs> so te- you you were telling me one day, I think you've got a story or two when you were a helper, like. Tell me about some of the guys you worked with <laughs> as a helper when you first got thrown out there. Like, were y'all uh, commercial, big time commercial mainly? We were seventy percent commercial and thirty percent residential, and that sounds like such a statistical it was, number. I, I know that because I, I put the damn thing together to figure out what we were, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was part of what I did. But uh, I had some very uncomfortable moments. I was going to say, uh, being a helper is uncomfortable. Right? It is because you're, well, let me, the very it's first. It's uncomfortable okay, for both you of that. you. The first, one of the first experiences I had, because we were plumbing and we were HVAC, and I knew nothing about plumbing. I knew, you know, a little over a year's worth of HVAC because I, I worked with a an internship and I, I was in school, so I knew a little bit. I knew nothing right. about plumbing. And I got stuck as a helper, and the helper you know, he told me, he goes, there's times you're going to be just holding a wrench. And I said, okay. He goes, but you're going to learn. You're going to learn a lot. And he goes, and you're going to need to be that guy that just holds that tool for that guy. I said, okay. He sent me out with a plumber to pipe up these dual bu- uh, boilers that, that was being installed. And as we're piping them up, it was all copper piping. And it was all soldering. And I knew, I knew about soldering, but I didn't know about like any of the terminology of right. tools. This is how green. You know, like I said, I came from banking and and medical, and the guy was he, lo- he looked like he was like a drunk Santa Claus. This is what this guy looked like. <laughs> he was bearded, uh, overweight. Uh, yeah. He wore uh, he wore suspenders to hold his pants up, and he <laughs> name, I'm not gonna throw his name out there, but he was he was very fucking <laughs> and so he was sitting there with me, and and nobody could get along with him, and they stuck me with him, and I'm you know like mid twenties green as can be and i remember we were on the job it was hot as hell because it's the middle of summer and we were in the boiler room and he he was like get them channel locks and i was like what what are those channel <laughs> locks <laughs> and what he, he's like he's lock? like channel locks and i'm like like a wrench and he's just like no and he got all mad and then he comes back and it's just like all day all day long there's another time he goes give me a nail give me give me a give me a nail i'm like an l I'm like, what's the nail? He goes, this right here. And I'm like, oh, okay. And like, come and say, like, yeah, give me another 90. I'm like, what's a 90? He's like, damn it, boy. And I, I, I remember standing up and I told him, I said, I'll say his name is John. I was like, John, I was like, if you cuss me one more time, I was like, you can get the tools your damn self. He goes, well, I'm already having to get up and get on my damn self because you don't know what the f- you're doing. <laughs> that was a very uncomfortable moment. Oh, yeah. and then to top it and off, then you got to ride closed, home with him. We, yeah, I had to ride in his truck with him home, and he almost <laughs> ran through a red light because I, whatever. But we, I remember it was four thirty. We closed at four thirty. I'm supposed to be in my car. He's supposed to be drive back to the shop, and I'm supposed to be in my car at four thirty because I get paid till four thirty. It's like four forty five, and he stops at Kmart. <laughs> Kmart. I forgot all about it. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes. He had like one of them igloo coolers that you, you know, and he's like, yeah, the seal's broken in it. I'm going to get it swapped out. And I was like, 
dude, it's 4.45. Right like, what are we doing right now? And he's like, <laughs> he goes, you're going to get stuck in traffic anyway. Um, and he gets out of the car and goes. I sat in the truck the whole time. Oh. I'm like thinking, what the hell is going on right now? Oh, yeah. When you're a helper, you're at the mercy, son. You're oh, you are. are. There was another time, man, I uh, that we were trying to finish this job up. This is towards the end of me being a helper. And uh, we had this routine, me and this installer and like we had i had my jobs he had his jobs and then we'd go back and make sure that he made sure i did all my stuff right but we would like speed through every job we had and he had to run to like the supply house to get something at like the end of the day and he's like stressing because he's like trying because he was a stickler for getting done early so yep. that he could he, he didn't like staying late and I'm sitting there and everything's done. He's he had to get like something like a gas regulator, something stupid, you know, like all the piping was done, everything's done. So I'm sitting there putting up his gauges in the back of his truck and he's like, Yeah. He goes, Hurry up, put them in there. I'm gonna run up here and get this and you go up there and you finish doing this. And I'm like, Okay. And I couldn't reach where he hooked his gauges. So I had to get up in the back of his truck. And when I did, he took off. <laughs> and I am in the back of his truck and the door shut on me because he hit the stop he hit the stop sign and when he slammed on brakes, the door shut. I'm in the back of his truck and <laughs> We're driving down the road and Does he even we get, we get down the road probably a good ways. And I finally got to where I could get my phone because he was driving to where I couldn't really get in my pocket to get my phone. And I finally called him. I was like, Hey man. Uh, he's like, yeah, he goes, what's wrong? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the truck. back of your truck. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm in the, I'm in the back of your truck. He goes, what the are you doing back there? <laughs> I was Holy like, man, I was crap. like, you're a freaking maniac. But yeah. <laughs> I've had a bunch yeah, well, of stories. There's other oh uncomfortable moments I've had. We'll so, get into them later if you want. But so tell me <laughs> tell me how so you were a helper for what, year, two years? And then I was a helper for uh eleven months. Okay, so so Ish, from there did you there. did you go to crew lead or did you did you move into no, I went in. Job at that I point. went into. They called it a junior mechanic. I think they made the term up for me. I don't know, but <laughs> I got into that, and then all of a sudden, the estimator for the service department, <clears throat> he left. And when he left, he'd been there for oh god, fifteen, twenty years. He left, and uh, they offered it to me. And my boss told me originally, he goes, "This is what I originally hired you for," because I had an idea he was leaving. He goes, "And I, I wanted you to get hired on." And I wanted you to get some experience. He goes, but this is what I originally hired you for. This, I want you to ride around right the back of some guys. Vans. He told me, he goes, Zach, he goes, I'm going to tell you, he goes, when I interviewed you, he goes, I knew you were so full of shit. He goes, but you know what? I hired you for this position and I put you in this one because I knew that it would get you in here. So that's word for word. Exactly what he said. <laughs> nice. I'm trying to, Cause you and I've known each other just for forever. I've known you for I don't know you since like 2012. Yeah, so for, for everybody that eight years, yeah, that has or hasn't listened before, um, I met Zach when I came to distribution in in his market because I, I I didn't grow up where I work, so I didn't I didn't know anybody, so pretty much I just I, I went and tried to meet everybody I could meet, you know, and when I first when I first started the company Zach worked for wasn't assigned to me they were assigned to another salesperson but he was let go for reasons i can't talk about um but after that i i kind of inherited the company that zach worked for and that's how i first met zach so i've known zach a long time you I'm, almost got me in a lot of trouble too actually it's my fault <laughs> <laughs> you you tried to get me to sign our company up is <laughs> when we work for now as dealers and you remember this and you and i were sitting there well, because we were signing we the paper and my boss came in and said you can't do that yeah we were trying I'm to like what he that. goes you can't do that he goes man they'll fire you over that i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> rod's about to get me fired man <laughs> oh all we were doing is we were trying to just we were trying to put him on the dealer locator so our sister brand couldn't go behind me and and try to just oh, drop I got their you. pants to take us over. Which, which now that you're on this side, you understand that I that side I do, of the process. Right. But at that point, I just back up. I understood it then as well. Just <laughs> my, my boss didn't understand it. I think it's crazy how how much different it is going from contractor side to distrib distribution. Like, it's a whole nother learning curve. It is. It, there's, there's a lot a of lot of things. stuff that I thought. 
man, why, why can't they keep these parts? Like, God, why do they not have this control board? You know, why do they not keep this? They need to keep everything in there. Like we'd always be like, this is a great place for a supply house, but yep. you get on the distribution side and you're like, yeah, I'm like, why don't we have these boards? And you know, your boss is like, okay, well, we've sold one in four years. Uh, we, we're not going to, we're not going to pay to keep them in here. Like, Oh yeah. And you're like, Oh, that kind of makes sense. You know, but oh yeah, um, it's a fine line there to try to figure out what to keep, you know, but when I go to these, you know, I go to these training classes and I'm like, um, I'm putting on, tra- you know, I, I did a Greek class um, last year and I was talking about, you know, you got to watch this here and watch this here. And they're like, well, it don't matter. You ain't got none of them in stock anyway. You got to order everything. And I'm like, and you, what do you say? Like, <laughs> I remember being on yeah. his side going, I yeah, get what the hell? You're not keeping these parts. Like. Um, so it's tough. I mean, you start learning why, you know, between the margins and everything, but, um, so that and you start, you start realizing it's not practical a lot of times to hold parts for stuff that's 10 plus years old. That's out of warranty. Right. If they're even still available anymore. Um, yeah. Cause we, we still have to buy them. Yeah. I mean, someone has to buy them and if they don't get sold, then, then you just have to eat it. Exactly. There's right. a lot more so, on that on that topic right there than 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 the other side contractors even think about. I I never ever thought about it. I remember talking to um, our district manager about this, and he's he. I remember he he said you probably never ever thought that there was this much involved on this side, did you? And I said absolutely not. Never never did I think it. And then you know they think that you're not doing anything. They walk people walk in, contractors walk in, and they see you joking, laughing. I was talking to uh, the branch manager about it, you know, and yesterday, and he's like, yeah, he goes, you can't let them, you walk in and you're stressed out. They see it, they see it on your face and they think right. this place doesn't know what's going on. And there's a lot to get stressed out over, but I never, no, ever imagined it. No, it's hard to find a good, a it's, good it's different. It's different now. than I ever yeah. thought. So this week, um, since we're, we are on training, Believe it or not, this is a training podcast <laughs> episode. <laughs> we so this week we try. I tried my training, little uh, training. My training. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I tried the um, <laughs> tried the two hour. So I, I was going to do a two hour, and because we have COVID, right? I can only have four spots, same company, so we don't mix guys up, right? And so far so good um i don't know if you've heard anything riding from guys when they left out of there the Um, last the last two days it was um it's been such a whirlwind with everything else that's been going on i really haven't had a lot of time to do true follow-up other than the the bits i got here and there i know um you had three groups yesterday um and the very last group was was some of the you know kind of is almost kind of auditioning if they really want to make a decision to partner with us as their distributor um he's kind of in between you know where where he's he is with other distributors he's not really happy with you know the things that that they do or don't offer and one of his big sticking points is he wants he wants a trainer or a tech person such as yourself that knows what they're talking about um and I think well, a lot of this, you know, a lot of it yesterday was an audition. And, you know, as soon as he was done with your class, he was straight to me and he's like, he's like, man, that was great. He's like, uh, he said, you know, we need to sit down and talk. You know, he's like, I can't do it now, but you want to sit down one day next week. So I booked a meeting with him in the middle of next week to kind of start cool. wrapping this stuff up straight out of your class. So if that doesn't say you're, you're getting through to people. I don't know what does. Well, I mean, so like Zach was saying, right? You go to these hotels and there's, there's 50 people in there. So you hear contractors say, man, we got to find somewhere that's, do y'all offer training? And I know distributors that'll have 50 training classes throughout the year. And, you know, 25 of them are sales classes trying to tell you how cool the product is. 
Um, well, but that's that's important too. It's just as long as it's clarified before you send your technicians to a sales class that don't yep. need to go to a sales yep, class. And that's, right. that's the thing. And there's, that's something that doesn't, place. a lot of times it's never, it's never very clear. Or just a product class, right? Just telling about the air handler. Like, yeah, this is some cool features as it ha- that it has, right? Like these classes that I put on up here, I would never be able to get away with that. <clears throat> you get them once and they would never come back. Right. Yep. Cause they don't have to, um, so that's why, you know, without the continuing education, like we got to change it. It's, it's got to change. Um, so the two hour class, you know, Ryan got me today. I'm, I'm glad <laughs> I remembered to talk about this. <laughs> so my first, it had. <laughs> I felt like that was really long. What? Well, I'm thinking about your second class, actually. Yeah, we're talking about the first one that was a surprise. No, the oh, second oh, class. Yep. Okay. The I knew class, I didn't I have like a third. into lunch. It did well because I didn't have a third slot, so we just rambled on out there. We were. Just, I got you. I got you. So, um, no. So my first one started at eight, right? So Terry comes out there and says, "Hey, there's a lady and her son out here. I think they're taking your class." I'm like, "What? Seriously? I mean, you know, it's fine, but are you sure?" And I go out there and. <clears throat> It's, you know, it's a lady and her 18 year old son. They're ready to go. Um, oh, that was her son. Yep. Yeah, even better. Oh, wow. So he was 18, right? And he, we, we sit down, you know, and um, I was like, well, you know, the, the class is a startup, heat pump startup, right? So it's just going to kind of cover what do we look at before install, doing the install, and then starting it up properly. And, um, you know, we're cramming a lot in two hours, but, um, you know, I'm like, what's your deal? You know, what's your background? You know, I didn't know if I'm like, do I talk to her? Do I talk to him? It was a little awkward, but we, we finally got it going. Um, but he, he didn't go to school for this. You know, he graduated high school and was like, here we go. We're just going to go into this. Um, I don't know if she owns the company. I wasn't sure if she's half owner, if her husband owns it. I don't know. But he uh, he said he was a lead installer, and we kind of went from there. But um, but he, you know he's been learning from the field, right? He didn't go to school, and a lot of bad habits right out of the gate. You know stuff he was saying that he does. Yeah, we do this and we do that and we do this, and it's like oh boy. Um, but. You know, he was taking notes the whole time, and it, it ended up being being a pretty good class. I mean, with him being young like that, he was ready to buy some tools and get it going. I mean, I, re- I remember being there. But um, well, and what was so funny is, you know, they were a, their customer I had called on early, early in the year before we got put in lockdown in March. So I had oh, just kind of started getting into their office, and now I had met. I'd met um, the lady face to face, and I'll tell you the first two times I met her, it was, I mean, super cold shoulder, you know, like like sometimes it really is. I mean, sometimes you just get gate, what we call them a gatekeeper on, you know, to us. I mean, there's days right. you just you just can't get in to see people, and sometimes you just don't know what's going to break through. Um, you know, and then we went into lockdown in the middle of March. So a lot of these new, new people that I was trying to get in the door to, I still hadn't really made much of an impression yet. So, you know, I'm calling them forever and you're getting nowhere because they're they're just going to ignore you because they don't have to deal with you. They're going to deal with who they're used to dealing with that, you know, they know, and that's it, especially when it's in a position like that. So I really hadn't circled back to them a whole lot. And especially the last two months, there's a lot of people I kind of hate to say it, but there's some people in a little bit of a way I kind of had to avoid because it was just, you know, I didn't have anything to truly offer them when it came to equipment or anything that they were wanting to do because the whole industry was in trouble. So knowing that we were, we were doing classes again, I finally felt like it was, you know, where we could start trying to reach out to some of those people that I was trying to warm up early in the year just to see what would bite. Right. And honestly, I have never gotten responses 
as quick or with the multitude that I have when we decided to offer something that was hands on. I think. Oh yeah, and I mean, I think the hands really on people gotta have hard to, to see us actually doing it. I think that was a good. That's thing. what people want. Yeah. Um. So. She had called me, booked the class, and I said, you know, you can send two to four people. She said, okay, well, you know, let me make sure who I'm going to bring, you know, so that I can, you know, adjust the schedule for the guys accordingly. <laughs> you know, I I was thinking we were getting, you know, <laughs> three or four. Oh, you're good. You're good. Rate. I didn't care. So, no, but it just, you know, that was, that was not what I was expecting either. I remember in Kernersville last year, we had a kid – I think I said this on one of the other podcasts. Yeah, you, you brought it up on part one. Yeah, he was like 10 was, sitting there. I was there too. And I couldn't stop looking at him like when I was <laughs> up there teaching. I couldn't. I felt like I was looking. Oh, it was just weird. Well, what's funny is he was there, and then I think his older brother. He got a book and everything. Like <laughs> yeah, his, his older brother, who might have been, you know, 14, someone's son, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was family like, business. Yeah, yeah, this guy brought like a 14 year old to 10 year old. And that the other one, the little guy, he ends up he ends up knocking out about halfway through the class, and, oh, then, yeah. and then the other one, the other one, God, he must have pounded, you know, three or four cokes sitting there. I know he was wired for sound while the other one's sleeping. He was just waiting for something to happen. Oh, it was a Tuesday, and school was in. Like they were skipping school. Yep. To come to my class. I was like, sweet, family business. I mean, well, the best part was when they rolled up in the parking lot, the dad got out of the front and he rolled up the, the back door of the freaking box <laughs> truck and they both jumped out. <laughs> that was, what was even better. Oh yeah. You know, like going back to like what you're talking about with your son with school, you know, there is, I mean, this is a lucrative business, man. There's a lot oh, of money know. that can be made in this business. And, you know, as long as it's like the training you're putting on with the, the hands on, I mean, you're, you're molding. Right. You know, a fine. Oh, I could take that 18 year old you know? kid today. I could take yeah, him, make him and a genius with this industry. Right. If he wants, if he wants it. Right. But yeah, they can always leave. They can always do whatever, but like if they're good at what they do, they won't leave because so, they're going to thrive off of this. So my brother-in-law, right. He's, He's um he's four year degree, fell into a job, you know, makes two or three hundred grand a year, just kind of just boom, boom, boom. I mean, that's a very small percentage, right? That that does that. Yeah. Um if you looked if you look back at the people that have four year degrees, look back at the percentage that uses it and then look back at what they're making, it's the, the, the it's not good, right? I mean, I know a lot of people that have four year degrees that have that are in the trade industry that don't require it at all, right? Yeah, you know, but what, it's like, what you, you know, don't they, realize they got, there, they got there because they couldn't find anything with their four year degree, and then they came into here because you know, me or one of their friends got them in here, and then they realized how much potential is in this industry, and right. they're still here. Well, and like, like my brother in law, like I'm saying, like, he don't realize. He sees that guy come to his house fixing that AC out there. He don't realize that guy, you know, with a decent sized company is knocking out 120 a year. Oh yeah. Like that would never cross his mind. He's thinking that guy's making 40, 50 grand a year, right? Max. I, um, did, I didn't understand that either. Me. I didn't understand even growing up in it. I didn't understand that either. I was, I was running away from HVAC. I had no desire to do that anymore. It's like Ryan's I've been the old, master's degree in history and no it's not a master's no <laughs> no it's a doctorate it's a doctorate yes yes my my doctor doctor an offer yeah, Do I, yeah <laughs> man that's i, need, I needed to know i needed to know three languages <laughs> to get a doctorate apparently little house in the prairie and, dr atzenhofer uh, yeah atzenhofer bullshit and sarcasm i guess for my other two languages so that i could get my doctorate <laughs> no. bullshit and sarcasm <laughs> But no, I just, I, I didn't want to crawl under houses. I didn't want to get in attics. I was done. I was so tired of doing it because I'd done it forever. But then, you know, I worked my way through school with it. I worked, you know, three days a week. The other two days I'd go to school. So, you know, heat and air paid for me to go to school and get a degree. But I got a history degree. What was I going to do with that? 
other than teach. And I just, my mom was a teacher. I didn't really want to do the same thing. So I was trying to run away from it. But then I started to realize, you know, there were so many things that my dad didn't know. Sorry, dad, not throwing you under the bus, but there were, there, there were things on the, the business aspect of it, the business side of it, the technical side, no problem. It was, it was the running of the business part, which is where I felt that we struggled the most. So I, that was what I understood. I didn't have, I don't have a very, very mechanically oriented brain. I have a analytically oriented brain. So I, I think different. So that's a big, that's a big, I don't want to say problem in this industry, but that's where the, that's where the humps, these guys hit these humps, right? This guy's mechanically minded. He goes into this, he gets his license and piles of money just start falling in his lap. And guess what? He doesn't know what to do. He yep. doesn't know how to manage it. Yep. He didn't go to business school, right? But he can work on an AC and he can give people quotes and he can do a change out and then here comes this money and then you got to hire this guy and then you got to hire this guy and then you got to now you got a secretary and how do you manage all that and that's where a lot of them just fall on their face yeah. right there or it's just what you said all this money starts piling in because it's more than what they've made before they spend but it. the they thing is it. the way they're getting it is they're undercutting everyone around them because they're not thinking consciously True. on a business aspect and then they fall through and they're gone, but then the person that is still there that's been there for, I don't know, 50 years struggles right. because they have to compete with that happening day in, day out with the contractors right. coming in. Correct. Yeah. And that's another story. Not. Oh, yeah. Though. But that was, it, it's because yeah, of sorry to get on a no, no, tangent you're fine. on that. You're fine. I mean, it's a tangent. I kind of, I'm the one that ran us down it even worse. But, <laughs> but I, I wanted, Part of what, what I wanted out of being on the distribution side was I wanted to be able to help those guys fill that gap. Yeah, there should be training on that. Because nobody helped us fill that gap. So right, that's what you do to, now. I wanted to be able to be that resource, which is why that that's the biggest part I, I enjoy about my job. I know we talked about it before, but Yeah, you manage I, their account. You're the you're the territory manager. You manage them. But I get I get great enjoyment out of seeing them or helping them be more successful. Right. I'm sure it feels good. Yeah, commission's great. <laughs> 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 yeah, we they gotta be successful. Yeah, I mean but yeah, <laughs> from the tech, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean that's the thing. No nope, we were you know, one of these episodes we were talking about partnering up with a distributor. And like, I want to offer sales training. Like, how do you give a quote? Like, how do you approach the homeowner? Like there's, um, there's only so much I can teach, right? About a TXV and a reversing valve. These guys are, you know, there needs to be other training. The best training that. I ever had. The best training I ever had was there was a, it was a four, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It was a four day in a row class it was called sales, sales boot camp yeah yeah and it was it was it not only taught me to have faith in your product but it taught me ways to get around you know it wasn't about like of course when you're in there they're like they want you to like convince the homeowner to make this you know to right to purchase right then and there but like everyone that you pair up with is successful they they'll sit there and they'll say well we go in there and we do this, but we don't put the pressure on them. We tell them to let us know when they're ready and they leave. And then the homeowner will call them back because right. it's just, you know, nobody wants that pressure. I mean, it, it, some people, it works for some people and some people it doesn't, but that was the best thing that I ever, ever took was something like that because not only did it teach you, um, like your product and how to learn your product and how to sell your product, but it taught you how to build value in your, in your, uh, business like instead yeah, of like yeah well this is this industry. and this is this be like yeah well it build value instead of dropping your price to match this guy you don't need to drop your price you should build value in your business and say well this is why you need to go with us and and, and not them yeah because I, we I do this do, we do that we do this i'm and gonna do a whole episode on that more than, 
did anybody realize it? And when I started using that after this, when I got out of that class, I was pumped. I was ready to use everything I learned. <laughs> yeah, right. It was You're amazing so how much happened, you know, after I went through that class. And that class was very uncomfortable because we had to do role play and everything else. But it was the best thing that I ever did on a sales side. And I, I firmly believe that if every contractor did that, they would, I mean, they, they wouldn't regret it. No, that's what I mean. We need to, distributors need to offer stuff like that. Um, so I think, I guess we can, we can roll into discussing that. I know we were talking about training opportunities and then, you know, but also there's sometimes there's the frustration of lack thereof. Um, Zach, I don't know what all, you know, outside of that one sales training you had before you came to this side, if you I'm trying to think what all, you know, if anything, have you been a part of on this side is other than just kind of being thrown to the wolves, trying to learn stuff. Um, like in a field since no, no, I'm talking about all of it. Like now that you're now that your distribution side, you know, what if, what are some training things that, that you know you you wish you had or you maybe don't even know you have or what are some well, things that you would, I think that you know Dennis that one training he did on uh it's fact that, that we're going from copper to aluminum coils and he did that whole training on how to braze aluminum I think that that's and then the fact that they could sit there and watch you do it and if they wanted to play with it themselves you would sit there and and watch them and guide them on how to do it and that right there is major things like that oh, things yeah. that you see that are coming up you know like uh whether it's a txv that's you know on top of it not only is it aluminum you're sitting there talking about you know purging you know nitrogen through the system so that way the txv doesn't lock up or get blocked up with soot you know stuff like that little things like that hands-on face-to-face is great i think yeah I mean, they need to see with it like 50 people or 25 people i i don't i feel like that's good in a in a business aspect when you're talking about you know, sales or business development resources and, and like what you need to do to build your company and blah, blah, blah. That's great. But when it comes to these technicians, they, they signed up for this job because they didn't have to sit in a classroom. And so I've been watching, I've, I've come by and I've been watching you. I look like a creeper sometimes and you, you're not even no, noticing me, you know, coming by, just watching. <laughs> there was one time I was sitting there watching you guys for a little bit, like through the shelves, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like the hills have eyes like i'm like that kid watching you like you're my next victim but no i'm sitting there watching you and it's awesome watching the way you're talking to these guys and, and you got them interacting and and they're talking they're engaging and yes this is like two guys but it's still it's like you're making a, an impact on them and you know you're making an impact on them when well, yeah, you I mean, like it's 10 too... people in that classroom you hope that you made an impact but like when you leave here i can tell you i've talked to all of them most all of them and every one of them has told me it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. It's one of the best things they've done because it's hands-on. It's personal. It's awesome. And and I'm like, yeah, I'm like he's he's awesome. He's trying to change the way that this industry is. He's trying to change all this. And I was like, he's awesome. And I, I mean, I talk you up like you wouldn't even believe. And they love Sweet. it. They freaking eat it up, dude. They well, yeah, I mean, they I, love it. They're telling me nothing but good things. I mean, I'm doing this because this is what I would have wanted. This is what I didn't have, right? I had to learn it all the hard way. Yep. Um, if, if they if, if our distributor that we were with then was offering classes more than likely th my boss was like ah we ain't got time for that right now right we ain't got time for that we got too many calls today blah 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 okay well it there's more value to it right i mean if i'd have had that 18 year old kid if he'd have came today and it was 50 people in a hotel room or 25 right all different contractors all different ages different companies I'm standing up there. He wouldn't have got nothing out of no, that. No, no, he'd have, he'd have been deer in headlights the whole time. He Not wouldn't have asked a single question. Because he'd been too one, embarrassed. Because I was that guy. I'd sit in the very back, and I'd get what I could, and I'd move on. And he, you know, anybody yeah, got any you questions? you turned it from a teaching experience to a conversation. That's the right. difference. And a conversation is more engaging than teaching. I mean, you're teaching them, but you're literally having a conversation and you're educating them on how to do this. And they're asking questions and you're telling them. And then you're like, well, what's an experience you've had with this? And they'll tell you. And then you relate to them and they're like, holy crap. And they leave and they're going to remember that, man. It's like that. That's oh, yeah. that's major. And I think well, hopefully I like with Wayne coming in there, I think it's I, 
I hope that he goes and well, nobody knows who Wayne works for, by the way, but Wayne, hopefully he goes in and shares that experience and maybe it becomes a thing. Right. Well, I mean, I think distributors offering training a lot of times they're just checking a box. Is right? his name they're Wade? Like, it's Wade. He yeah, goes okay, by Wayne. He doesn't okay, care. Yeah. <laughs> I heard Rodden Rodden snored at me, and I I figured out what that meant. A little late, but I got it. So the one thing I want to ask Zach about is what was going through your mind, and we're going to go down a hole here real quick. Um, What was going through your mind when you were in the bathroom and the firecracker went off? (laughs) Uh, So Uh, backstory, right? So we, we prank Zach all the time. And <laughs> we got these firecrackers that when you throw them and they hit something, they go off, right? You don't light them. And it's not a sap pop. It's like a damn M80 going off. Oh, it's loud. It's, it sounds like a 22 <laughs> rifle being shot right beside your head. <laughs> so <laughs> you can hear, you can hear Zach's belt jingling and Travis flips the lights off and launches that thing in there. Cause he, he videoed it, but. What? As soon as the lights went off, my whole, uh, you can't hear it in the video, but I'm just, I start, gr- I grunt. I'm like, it just tightened oh, up. because I knew it was coming. I, well, I didn't know that was coming, but he shuts the lights off on me all the time. And I'm just like, right. damn it. Well, there's times I have to get out of the bathroom with my damn cell phone. You know? but I didn't expect that. And then the damn M80 went off right in front of me and I couldn't hear, see, or anything. <laughs> Oh, it's just ringing. It's just ringing. Oh, man. Just a good old drop, a good old GD. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So if so I'm really Zach, scared, a GD comes out. If I'm GD, sort of scared, a G comes out. <laughs> the, GDs come yeah. out when I'm really scared. <laughs> or really we were going to go around and everybody was supposed to get everybody and see what they say when they're terrified. Like what comes out of their mouth? And we know what comes out of mind when I get pissed off. <laughs> Here comes mm-hmm. Dennis with the shaker sound effect now. Okay. Yeah. Edit that in later. Um, oh, geez. All right. So anybody got anything else want to add? I feel like we covered a lot here. We did. Uh, no. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens with this training. I like it. It's it's kind of. I didn't put a long enough break in between them. <laughs> yeah, uh, two hours, then fifteen, then two hours, then fifteen, then two hours, and. I feel like I mean, if you're one on one, like with somebody, and you yesterday. got two hours, you know that you're talking about a long enough break for you. Right for me. Oh, okay, I was thinking that. Yeah. I was gonna say with, with them being engaged, that two hours is like perfect. For them. That, yeah, but, yeah. That, but if they show up late at all, then you're already under the gun. That's the other headache, too. Yeah, yeah, I guess you gotta, yeah, yeah, I might have to tweak it just a little bit. Yeah. Like I said, old, um, old fancy pants yesterday, yeah. Oh, somebody's gonna be late. That's uh, that's always this industry. I mean, oh, yeah, we had a contractor just he was so late, he didn't show up today. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, yeah. That's the way it gets and that's the other thing I get a lot, right? You got these contractors, man. When y'all gonna offer some training, man? I got two guys, they're terrible. I need to get them trained up. Uh, <laughs> next week we're offering it. Mm, that's not good for me. <laughs> it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. <laughs> yeah, we had a couple of no shows already. Oh yeah. But he they're, gonna, they're gonna ask you next week when you go off for training again. You'll say, uh, never. Uh, well, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of them want me to say, I tell you what, just come by and we'll do some custom, you know, we'll do some private custom <laughs> training. I'm like, no, man, we're not we're not doing that. Yeah, like you're the car salesman, you're gonna just give up everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, if you've got if I mean, I'm looking forward to, right, if if, they, if I get a, like a trailer, I can pull these systems around in. I'm looking forward to going to a shop that's got five or six installers, maybe ten, and 
spend two to four hours just hardcore on what they want to know right um here's the system what do y'all you know what do y'all suck at let's let's get it all ironed out today um and we can do some powerpoints but i hate powerpoints i mean i absolutely hate them yeah but you're using it to stay on focus like stay on top well of i'm bad about looking up there at my powerpoint and then i'll turn and talk and i won't talk about nothing that's on the screen because <laughs> i look up there and i'm like eh, it's just not really that important let's talk about this and they're all looking at the screen and i'm talking about something else and I'm like what what are we doing here like what am i supposed to be listening to you am i supposed to read that uh what's the biggest class you've ever had to teach uh, that was probably one of ridings right uh, we had what 24 and one? Oh no 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 Bleep. I'll bleep that out. <laughs> you have to bleep that out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what I was getting at. I was just wanting to br- have you bring so it. So I went here. to, yeah. So I went to a, we met at a contractor shop and it was installers only. This is when I first started installers only get in there. And there's like 70 people in there. It was huge. <laughs> I'm like, you're kidding, right? Like, nope. I've never done this. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) you've got a bigger classroom than any community college professor. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm working on a PowerPoint that Ryden created. (laughs) Oh, you didn't even do it? No, I don't think so. No. Um, the majority of the training PowerPoints we had that weren't canned from our manufacturer that we had before Dennis was here. I built them for myself or the previous tech guy and I would take him with me and I would teach the class myself. Same yeah. same tech company. I, I, I taught a, a duck system class about how to you know verify and look at what your duck work is when you're going in to sell a change out system because that, comp- that same company has 18 salespeople but they they wanted to focus, you know. They kept they wanted to know why they were having callback after callback after callback on all these new installs. Well, the reason being was they never changed or even looked at any duct work at all. Right. So, I built an entire PowerPoint presentation from salesperson's perspective instead of tech guy pers- or instead of tech guy perspective to try to get them to start looking at the whole picture of the system when they're in the house instead of just the equipment. And part yeah, of that's I, mean, how, the, the, I, I looked up and I'm like, there's like 70 people in here, 70 grown men staring at me. And they've got like a 20 foot drop down screen. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, this, this, this is a 40 foot ceiling room. It's massive. And they're all, st- and I'm like, this is, this is not happening. That was, we this were doing real. We only had like an hour to, for yeah. you to go to inverters. Full inverters. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Full inverters. Really? okay. Anybody got any questions? It's like 25 people raise their hand. I'm like, I just want to die right now. I just want to crawl under the table. What's an um, inverter? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best part was, um, if anybody's late to a meeting at this company, they lock the door. No, they can't it, get in. And it's they like lock the door class. and they can't get in. And look, if they come and they let them in and they have to wear this silly hat, well, guess who was late? Riding. Yes. <laughs> what? It's like Jeff oh, Spicoli. Fast times at Ridgemont. Yeah, freaking parking lot. <laughs> They're like, here, put this hat head. on. And you have to donate two dollars to like a kids charity. That's just their thing, right? If you're late to something, they're like, "All right, it's eight o'clock. Somebody that's lock pretty, the door." That's pretty cool, though. That's pretty yeah. cool. Really, I was just that's... trying to take the pressure off Dennis. That was that was all part oh, yeah. of my plan. Yeah, he, he says that now. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're like, lock the door. Lock the door. He's like uh, looking in through the little glass window. I'm, like and it's hey, right. I'm like, out here. I'm out here. Hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> Flash drive, let me the freaking. <laughs> yeah, all their 70 installers are on time. 
Well, Mr. Han, if we had pizza for everyone. Anyway. Fast I, swear, I swear okay. that day the pizza we had was from the joint where Corey works now. I swear it is. I swear it was. What, that same training? Yeah, that same training. Like They brought in like pizza right after that training class or something. I swear, village pizza. I swear that's where it was from. See, we just pl- I just plugged Village Pizza. They gotta hook me up with some pizza. Perfect. That's right. That's yep. what they do. They should they should give us all a, a pie to take home and we can They're sit. like three people f- listen to y'all show. <laughs> but I'm not giving you pizza. How many podcasts do you guys listen to and they're like, We'll be right back after these messages. And now back to the show. And then they go right back into the show because there's no sponsor. <laughs> That's, what that's us. That's <laughs> us. That's right. It happens all the time when I'm listening to stuff. I haven't heard that one. I usually. Oh, really? I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. And then every once in a while, I hear an advertisement. I'm like, well, this episode must have done really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to get some ads on here. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, we'll let Rodden. Rodden will make them up. <laughs> yeah, we'll just have. Yeah, we'll just have fake fake stuff. What if you get some new people in here? I guarantee you it'd be great if we could even get Travis on here. Never happen. <laughs> no. I can let no. him I can lend him all of my stuff. You don't think it'll happen? I don't know. We'll <laughs> no. see. Here is your we'll challenge, see. Travis. We challenge you to join the podcast. That's right. Yep. I will I will see what I can do to help him. I might have to go to his house. I was gonna say, you might have to go up there. And just we only have. Uh, I only have one mic input on this thing, so we'll have to share a mic. Oh Let's boy! Oh boy! That's I'm right. To get a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, none of y'all know who we're talking about, but that's Travis's signature sound. Oh, he he's the sound effect. I thought I was. You walk good on around sound and he'll be like, "Yeah, he walked by. Yeah, he walked by. Yeah, I went in here and I did this, and there was a squirrel in the tree." Yeah, <laughs> he's the sound effects king. He don't even realize he does oh, it. Oh, he's so good at it. He's so good. He's at bad. It. He, he's he's subconscious of it now. He's like, God, he, he. because we're calling him out on it every time we I laugh know. at him. <laughs> he's like, "Oh, did I do it again?" We're like, "Yeah, you did it again." <laughs> There was one time he was just like, <gasps> his t- and I'm like, what the hell was that? He goes, oh yeah, was I doing something? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh okay. Yeah, his <laughs> like his two stroke motor sounds and his car sounds and oh, uh, they're man. spot on, man. Yeah, they're funny. <laughs> they're pretty funny. <laughs> All right, so Ryan, you gonna send us off here? We got we got to get out of here. <laughs> we'll be on here for. Well, hours. I enjoyed this. Yeah, appreciate you coming on, Zach. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. We appreciate it. The show is sponsored by Zach. Sorry, go ahead, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> where's where's Zach's mute button? I'm gonna mute Zach. <laughs> Just remember. The clock's ticking, dude. Yep. Two thirty one and eight. Two thirty one and eight. <laughs> that's it that's a second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reference today buddy I know oh, clock's great. ticking dude yeah we definitely gotta go now <laughs> yep alright <laughs> thanks for listening everybody we'll catch you again next week have a good one yep see y'all <laughs>